So I want to state one thing up front. Uh, I'm really sorry, but this talk is probably not for you, or at least most of it, which means don't get me wrong, right? Uh, I, I totally want to talk to you, and I appreciate that you're here and that you're listening to me, but you're at Cephalocon, so that means that you came here to talk about Ceph, to listen to other people talk about Ceph, to meet Ceph people, so chances are that you're not new to Ceph. So it's possible that what I'm talking about isn't for you, but for the colleague who couldn't come along, for the engineer that will be new to Ceph when she joins your team next month, for the acquaintance from IRC who can't travel to a Ceph conference from, say, Indonesia or Paraguay, or maybe it's even for your kid in college. So listen to me anyway. My name is Florian, uh, and in 2015, my team and I set out with, uh, with an idea. We'd been doing a lot of training for the better part of three years on Ceph, on OpenStack, on related technology, but we'd done it in the conventional way, where a group of five to ten people seated in a room listen to a consultant slash instructor. So basically, what we were trying to be to our customers was the know-it-all. And people liked it, and we could make our own little contribution to spreading the word about Ceph. And more than zero people who sat in our classes back then did a keynote at this very conference, so I guess we did reasonably okay. Uh, and while that, which is to say the hands-on, face-to-face, instructor-driven training is admittedly a very effective means of knowledge transfer when it happens, it has a ton of drawbacks, because if that sort of thing is our principal means of how we want to spread knowledge about technology, then we're up against three really massive issues, namely cost, speed, and scale, because the conventional instructor-driven training method is terrible at all three of those. Uh, first, it's really expensive to get good instructors, and then it means disruption because you're getting pulled out of a project for three days or maybe even for a week. And it takes tons of time to include prep and scheduling and all that. So there's another way of doing this, and that's online learning. But oh my lord, is online learning frequently terrible. Because it often hinges on learning watching an instructor talk on video. That's essentially just one person chatting away at a static, ca a static camera, which is really boring. Uh, and then also self-studying documentation. And then somehow you're supposed to come out of this able to understand and manage increasingly complex distributed systems without ever having touched one that you can also break with impunity. That's a little, less, a little like putting astronauts in a lecture hall with study books and a few tabletop exercises and then dragging them out of that lecture hall, strapping them to a rocket and hurling them into space without them ever setting foot into a simulator. Uh, that's insanity. We'd never do that. Uh, and, and yet, it's remarkably close to how a lot of technology training works. So what do we really need? We need learning environments that actually help you learn the technology that you want and you need to learn, that come with immersive, realistic lab environments that you can interact with just as you would with a production platform, and that allow you to interact directly with your peers just as you would in your professional peer group. And we want all of that with the momentum and the speed of open source platforms that innovate rapidly and openly. And so my team and I built one. Uh, based on the Open edX platform, which, by the way, is a whole separate talk in itself, and it's incredibly cool, particularly for a Python person, but I digress here. So the platform that we built is CityCloud Academy. Uh, it's academy.citycloud.com. You can totally go there and take a look, and one of the courses that we have there is CC212, which we've had there for a while. Uh, it's called Ceph Distributed Storage Fundamentals, and we've made a change to it. See if you can spot it. There we go. Okay. It's still called Distributed Storage Fundamental, but now it has the course number CC213 because we only semi-retired the old one. And it has a ton of technical background information about Ceph. Some is very basic. Some of it is pretty involved, um, like um, say, for example, how does CephFS differ based on whether it's accessed via Fuse or, or, the, or the kernel file system driver and that sort of thing. Um, and you're going to be building your very own Ceph cluster uh, with Ceph Ansible. And you do all sorts of interactive labs on that. Again, some of those are quite basic. Some are more advanced. And of course, uh, since this is all completely self-paced and automatic and cloud-driven, if you actually stuff something up beyond the point of repair, then there's a big red reset button and you can get a completely fresh and pristine environment where you can uh, start from scratch. We've got new stuff in there. Everything is now on Nautilus. We're no longer messing with Joule and Mimic anymore. We moved off of Ceph Disk to everything with Ceph Volume. We've got practical hands on dashboard content. We're finally covering Erasure Coded profiles and add to that the usual smattering of updates uh, related to the Nautilus release. And you've got a very handy and useful and current course that, you can s that serves as a very solid foundation to further explore Ceph. Oh, and about the cost thing, it's free. We're making it available for 20 learners a month for free on a first-come, first-served basis. These open seats usually go live on the 
the first business day of the month. They're announced on Twitter via City Cloud and at a different time of day each month. So we don't always preferentially treat people in a specific time zone. Now, I know there's a, some people in this room that have actually taken this course and others who might. So this is the part of the talk that is totally for you. You can help us with this. Uh, your feedback makes the course better. There's a discussion tab in every course that you can use to interact both with your fellow learners and with course authors. The more specific you are with your feedback, the better. You can send us your suggestions about what we should add or remove or change. Um, so that helps us too. And you can totally spread the word. So please go ahead, sign on take a look and tell us what you think. Thank you.